All right. Well, hey, everybody. I hope that uh, you're able to join us and uh, for our time together. This is uh, Brad Castine. Is it Castine? Castine. Castine. Okay, Castine. That's yeah. something I should have asked you before oh, we started. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard Castine before, but I like that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, leave it to me. Castine, yeah. I, I seriously have name glitches. And so yeah. anybody who's like watched in, any of my interviews before, you know that I will mess up a name in a heartbeat. So yeah. <laughs> everybody, I'm, this is I'm Brad. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> great, I'm the great. same. Great. Well, uh, I'm Casey Cole Corbin, and I do uh, coaching, particularly business coaching. And Brad has been in my little membership program for teachers of fluid art for, I think, over a year and a half. Do you, do you remember, mm -hmm. Brad? That yeah, sounds about like right, that. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he has just been blowing it out of the water. And so I really wanted for you guys to be able to meet Brad. Uh, whether or not your focus is teaching fluid art or if it's other things. Brad is just doing some amazing things that he's obviously done, put his time in and, and research and um, uh, he's really doing it right. And so I just was just watching him do all these lives on Facebook. And I said, so I asked him, I said, hey, could we do an interview and you could share a little bit about you know what you're doing there. And so uh, Brad, introduce yourself to everybody, maybe some of your background, you know, sure. a little bit about you. Sure. Well, thanks for having me, Casey. It's going to be a fun interview, I think. And uh, mm -hmm. my name is Brad Caston. Um, I'm an artist, first and foremost. I live in San Diego, California. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been, uh, I've done a lot of different things, but uh, I started out wanting to be an artist when I was all the way back in middle school and high school. I took uh, lots of art classes. I went to college and studied illustration and uh, graphic design. Um, and so I was planning on being a illustrator, like for, for books, a book illustrator. And, wow. uh, so I was, had my whole path set and I knew just what I was going to do. And I was going to go to this very prestigious, uh, art school in Pasadena. Um, but then, uh, a friend of mine who was a very good artist at the time, this is back in college. He said, you have to go take some classes at, with this guy named Jeff Watts. Uh, he had a little tiny school uh, that he ran himself in downtown San Diego. And so I said, oh, okay, well, I'll check it out because my friend had taken a lot of classes there and he was fantastic. So I went in there, I walked in the classroom in about 10 seconds. I said, okay, that's it. I'm not going to go to Pasadena. Um, <laughs> I'm going to just stay here and focus and learn everything I can from Jeff because he was the best artist I had ever met wow. in person at that point. Wow. Uh, and the students were phenomenal. So they had the student work all over the walls and it just blew my mind. So I spent the next about four or five years at Jeff's uh, school. We changed spots a couple times, um, but it was a very intense study. It was traditional drawing and painting. Uh, so I did a lot of portraiture, figure drawing, uh, uh, landscape painting, plein air painting. Uh, conceptual work. I mean, it was like heavy duty stuff. And wow. I realized after all this time and practicing and I got quite good, um, but I discovered that I just had lost all desire to do this type of artwork. Hmm. Um, so I just was completely burned out. And so I just stopped all art for a while. I started hmm. another business with my, my dad and my brother uh, doing woodworking things. We built um, uh, artist furniture, like Oops. artist easels. Still connected to the art. <laughs> yeah, still connected to the art. Um, although but not I'm making sabbatical. it. Yeah, it's just a different type of art form. So I did all the design work and uh, created a bunch of lines of products. Um, Blick.com, they contacted yeah. me and I designed a series of easels for them. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, Blick, so those Blick are, is huge. Yeah, I was, I was the famous in the art supply industry <laughs> <laughs> in that little <laughs> little segment. So, yeah. but then I, we met uh, another company that had a huge factory in China. And so we sold uh, our little outfit to them. I kept doing design work for a long time and uh, still design things uh, here and there, mostly. Um, uh, everything is kind of just rolling in, without me, but uh, but um, but that was a uh, about five years or so, and mm. uh, five or six years of doing the, these different things, and then I started wanting to 
make some art again. Um, I didn't know how or what I wanted to do, but I had like this desire to be creative other than uh, woodworking. So uh, I, and I knew I didn't want to go back to traditional uh, representational art. So mm-hmm. um, I, I'm not exactly. I'm not exactly you sure went how I felt. The whole fluid. other polar opposite, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> with, the, with fluid art, yeah. Yeah, I, I knew. Yeah, I knew I didn't want anything to do with, a, you know, drawing a portrait or a landscape. <laughs> but uh, I was, um, I was completely um, uh, obsessed with, you know, color and color theory and also design, the principles of design, mm. and. Um, and strangely enough, I think it was some watercolor artists that did some abstract work um, that I I really enjoyed what they were doing. Uh, John Salmanin was one of them. He's a very and uh, he's a very representational painter. Um, he's a famous watercolor painter, but he does a lot of abstract watercolor that I love. Um, and so, and Sterling Edwards is another one mm. who's a fantastic watercolor artist. But then he does abstract stuff. So wow. um, I, got, I just kind of fell into this world of abstracts and started learning more and more about them. Um, so I was I was playing with watercolor and I was playing with collage. Um, did a lot of different abstract things. And then all of a sudden, uh, I think it was Instagram, I, I started seeing these paintings that were uh, like these amazing, <laughs> magical. Uh, yeah, magical combinations <laughs> of colors and designs. And I was like, how are they doing that? And that was my introduction into fluid art or paint mm-hmm. pouring. And so I started just dabbling around with it. And then once I got like my first nice looking painting, that was like, that was it. That was, I need to know how to do everything there is to know about paint pouring. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's, yeah. I'm curious now, Brad, like, so you have all this formal training in art, mm-hmm. which is uh, makes you very exceptional, you know, in the uh, fluid art community, because a lot of people, um, I know that you know this is, you know, they, they stumbled on it um, as almost like a five-minute craft thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, right. and, and Without much of an art background. And one of the wonderful things about fluid art and one of the reasons why, you know, the classes that we teach become so popular is people can create a completed piece, you know, where the whole canvas is mm-hmm. um, covered and has some of the essentials of, uh, you know, art uh, foundation. Um, just kind of automatically done through the uh, fluid dynamic process, right, you know, on the canvas. Mm-hmm. Um, how much of the tra- training that you had, very, you know, that was five or six years of training, how much does it inform your fluid art today? Because your pieces are beautiful. Uh, well, I think it has a lot, um, a lot to do with it. Uh, I think especially color, knowing mm-hmm. how to work with color, uh, what colors go together, what colors can be problematic. Um, and it's a little different with, you know, fluid art because colors combine differently. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a lot of mixing, so you have the to will be, of their own. <laughs> yeah, they have they do a lot of their own things, which I love. So mm-hmm. I find that you know less colors often are are beneficial because um, you'll get a wide range of different colors just from three or four colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then traditional color harmonies and things like comp- uh, complementary colors, triadic color schemes, those can be a little more problematic because um, you have reds and greens blending together and that creates can create some muddy colors or yellows and purples um, like to blend together. So Mm. you kind of have to figure out some workarounds um, to kind of keep those colors separated. Mm. But uh, my just exploring color is a is a big part of what I like to do. Uh, And then also uh, composition wise, it's harder to control in fluid art, but uh, I, I have some like rules and things I like to follow guidelines that don't always apply, but I like to keep them in the back of my mind yeah, uh, yeah. when I'm tilting the paint and uh, moving what I consider the center of interest around and yeah. looking at the corners and trying to get some areas with uh, that are a little more um, not plain, but um, not so exciting. Yeah. Um, and, contrast. Uh, yeah, so the things like that. Well, as I look yeah. at your work, like even behind you, you know, right mm-hmm. now, which is some beautiful work, you know, the getting shape, line, and form present in fluid art, I think, is something that is not often considered, but I always see it in your work. You have a, you oh. have a strong sense of that, and it creates such a cool movement. 
Um, and it, there is a place, it seems like, that always kind of draws your eye. And I, I like, you know, it's, oh, thank you, you. you have a thank conscious you. effort yeah. for that. And that's really neat. Yeah. So I, I'm always looking at, you know, what's happening in the paint. And uh, I love uh, I love line and I love shape and I love edges, especially. Mm. So when you can have a combination of like soft edges and hard edges mm. and blended edges and um, and then interesting shapes are kind of my primary goal you know having interesting things that is really um, cool yeah i just did a, a a demo friday this last friday which is a dustpan pour and um and that's a fun technique just because you can really control the shapes better mm. in that type of a technique so i yeah. love techniques that are you have a little more control over um those are fun as well as you know the like the flip cups and things like that, that kind of do their own thing. They want the to wild do ones. <laughs> the wild ones, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when I first discovered spinning, and it was really, really cool. But there was absolutely, positively, no way to reproduce the same. Oh, one. right. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Yes, absolutely. Uh, really good stuff. So it sounds like that you really took something that was um, uh, at, your, at your interest level at the time was really a hobby, and then you turned it into a business. So tell us about that. How did you transition this into a business? Well, that kind of happened, like most things, accidentally. It, uh, I, I was painting, and I was getting better with my different pouring techniques, and um, I don't think I had really shared it with anybody, but then uh, I met a group of friends um, from out of town, and they were fascinated by what I was doing. So <laughs> they wanted me to share with them. So we painted and uh, their kids painted and um, they're like, wow, you have to, you know, share this. And so <laughs> Brad, how'd um, you feel Do, like teaching that for the first time? What was that like? Oh, well, it was, well, it was friends. So it was very fun and comfortable uh -huh. for me. Um, I've always been very good at um, like kind of interacting with people. I'm mm -hmm. not, I don't consider myself a people person. I'm mm -hmm. very introverted, I think. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but I like interacting like, uh, with people in the public. Uh, when, I, when I had our, our wood business, we were at trade shows all the time. So I was always you know, demonstrating stuff or talking about uh, our products and things. So I have, I'm very used to talking to people uh, in, in public. And so, um, so I was like, yeah, I should teach this. And because I was at that time, I was learning there were a lot of uh, YouTube channels. There were a lot of Facebook groups. I was joining a few of them here and there, and um, but there were a lot of questions. That was the one thing I was realizing is there are endless amounts of questions and there are endless amounts of answers mm. for everything concerning paint pouring. And most of the time, they're all conflicting. You know, there's no, <laughs> there's no one white, right way to do it, and uh, which is true, um, but everyone has a different answer for everything. So it's very confusing. Mm -hmm. and uh, overwhelming. And so um, I started teaching just at Michael's, I think. I signed up for their, um, I forget the name of the, what they called it, but you could go and teach in their classroom yeah, and uh, community classroom or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, was, of course, before, you know, everything went crazy. But uh, so I started teaching those classes. I was, I think, advertising on Facebook with just some simple Facebook ads. And uh, but people were coming and learning, and they loved the classes. Wow! And so I structured them very step by step, and I, I you know furnished all the supplies and walked them through the whole process of what they needed to get and how to mix the paint. And uh, then we would do. They were all fit, focused on one technique, so we just do a, two or three paintings based on just one simple technique, like a ring pour or a flip cup. Uh, and then if they wanted to, they could take another class with another technique. So I kept them very kind of specific and uh, um, kind of to the point. So we're not overwhelming them with mm -hmm. 30 different techniques, which is, yeah. you know, crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And get, and get some coming back for more. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, well, we talked off camera in the green room about your, um, your processes. Uh, or, well, I wanted to ask you about your process because you said that you also are a writer. You enjoy writing. So when you're creating a class, do you, do you use that ability to write? Do you like write out your, your classwork? And then now you've taken everything mm -hmm. online. And uh, I would imagine that you did quite a bit of writing for that too. How does that work oh, for yeah. you? Well, tell me about yeah. your process. Um, well, the process, uh, the first thing is like, what, what is the end result that I want to bring to my students? 
or people taking my classes. And uh, so I kind of worked backwards from there. Mm -hmm. So if it was like a, like a swipe class, um, we'd maybe do two or three classes uh, or two or three paintings. Mm -hmm. And then I'd design what kind of color scheme I'd want to, I would want to, to explore. And I always um, created a color scheme for the class, but they didn't have to use those colors. That Those were just recommended colors. And I based those on uh, just a nice end result that they could get. Um, and so we'd have the technique and the color scheme and then uh, the supplies they would need. And so I'd bring, you know, write out a um, supply list so they could practice this at home if they wanted to. Uh, and then kind of just how I would go about doing it at home, breaking it down into just a very simple kind of step-by-step -step process. And coming from like a woodworking background um, it was a lot easier for me because you have a process for building anything mm -hmm. out of wood. So uh, I kind of adapted that like very practical type of application to this art artistic application. So, um, so it was just, you know, kind of breaking it down, doing outlines. It took a few, you know, times to, to kind of flush it out and get it, mm. get it working. Well, I've um, seen some of your online classes and I do, I love your, you have a methodical nature, you know, in the way that it's structured, but it's very, it's entertaining and you don't, uh, I don't know, get down where it gets boring oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or anything. That, so, yeah. 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 So, um, so everybody that's listening, either live or in the replay, by the way, if you're listening, um, either way, we'd love for you to comment um, on whatever platform that you're on right now. We're broadcasting to a couple of different pages and sites and YouTube. So if you'll just say, hey, I'm here, or uh, hi, yeah. Brad, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> Even if you're in replay, just say, hey, I'm in replay. Uh, I love seeing that. It's very encouraging. But uh, Brad also has this really cool course that he's created, and it's incredibly affordable. Um, I, pr I promise you, you, you will not see anything as valuable. It has the, the value packed into it as the course that Brad's offered. And he's even been incredibly generous to offer us a coupon code uh, for that. And so I'll go ahead and pop that into the um, uh, cool. each, each one of the frames there. So you guys can <laughs> click on that and check it out later. Um, I keep... I, Brad will tell you I've been on him about raising his price because it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, yes. it's it's a it's it's very very affordable so and he did you can tell he put in so much work and so many hours and of course his passion for paint pouring really shines through and so it's a really I, I highly recommend uh, that you get it so you, you what are you going to do next um, with this what's uh you, you've made a course and so mm -hmm. what what are you going to do with it next well the the first course I made is the foolproof pouring mini course um, and it's it's geared towards beginners who have never tried fluid art before to kind of see if they'd like it see mm. if they like the process so that's it's a very specific uh, system I created for that course yeah um, which is very step by step and no guesswork really um, just to I, see if you're interested in it. You know? I like in that course too, is that you, you don't go make people buy all the expensive stuff. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. you, you teach them how they can probably use what they have at home right now. Um, sure, if they yeah. have anything, uh, you got some glue and got some paint, you probably can take a <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Brad's, yeah. uh, initial course there just to see if you're going to like it, which is so yeah. smart. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that's important because, uh, um, you don't want to spend a lot of money on paints and things. Um, because you know you never know if, if it's for you or not for you so mm -hmm. and it doesn't require a whole lot of money even if you um want to you know explore it more in depth um, mm -hmm. so just craft paint and glue and some water and something to pour on yeah is all you really need yeah. and um, um but then so from there if they like that um i'm coming out with a new um program it's a new idea um i haven't really launched it yet or told many people about it, Ooh, but um, a secret. so it's a, it's a secret. <laughs> I won't let you in on the entire secret, but uh, it's something I, I've been working on for a while. And um, if you want to learn how to, to pour and learn the ins and outs, in, ins and outs of, of fluid art and paint pouring and all the different techniques, I've created um, something just for you where we go in depth in, uh, in more of a one-on-one -on -one type of situation, mm. which is a ongoing, um, it's an ongoing experience. And um, I'm kind of started that now. I have uh, my my 
free Facebook group is growing and mm -hmm. um, I've been interacting with all those people doing a lot of lives and mm -hmm. that's kind of a taste of kind of what this new program is going to be like cool. um, and so that is going to launch uh, fairly soon maybe by the end of the month I think I'll have my little introductory launch for that um, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll let you know when it's Please. coming so yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you're interested you could check it out and but in addition to that my plan is to create some more uh, paint pouring courses and these would be more uh, focused courses um, uh, designed around specific techniques so if you want to do or learn how to do a ring pour or um, if you want to learn how to do the flip cup or even like the cloud pour or things like that I'm gonna do a deep dive into each of those techniques um, and so we'll really get into flip cups or um, whichever technique it happens to be those will be rolling out kind of uh here and there as i uh, around my other projects but that's really cool um, hey, a listener a listener named um alicia says um thanks for sharing i'm a former high school art teacher and i'm just starting oh, cool. to schedule classes for adults it's a mindset awesome. switch uh from yes. academic to technical goals and to giving beginners help to be successful right away and i want to speak into that before you did too you know i i built my first course on uh okay. debbie cole who was one of the founding people of fluid art um mm -hmm. like six years ago and you know she shared with me actually her book that she wrote on it and so my first class that i did i just basically followed her outline you know and it's evolved since then and then you know we, we learn from so many people uh, that i, I just want to recommend one of the greatest things about debbie's initial book was as the the outline you know the structure oh, yeah. in which that mm -hmm. she you know did things and so uh alicia i would i would highly recommend that you get brad's course because just having that as uh, you, you'll be able to more quickly run <laughs> with your goals as far as teaching adults now after seeing his outline and his process and his information yeah that's great it's it's um i haven't taught a lot of kids i have taught some kids um and by the way kids are great at fluid art they're mm -hmm. they take to it much quick more quickly than adults do because <laughs> yeah. uh, they're not up in their head all the time but yep. um like, but it. it's different yeah it's different <laughs> they just jump in and do it yeah they uh, um adults are much more tentative yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We, adults, I think we, we, we've learned you don't take a bottle of point paint and you tip it upside down. That's bad. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> counterintuitive, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and counter messy because yes. you get your countertop really messy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Now, you had some uh, mentors uh, along in the process, mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's for anybody who's wanting to go next with maybe with a hobby or an interest you know and, and it doesn't have to be fluid art you know um, in fact I think your origins aren't you know aren't even in, in fluid art with mm -hmm. your first mentor um, uh, but getting mentorship really helps and so you have a series of mentors I'd love for you to kind of speak into those just kind of speak into somebody who would like to start a business or take their business to the next level sure well um, <clears throat> a mentor I think mentorship is incredibly important um, my first real mentor was Jeff Watts, and and that was a very like apprentice oriented mm -hmm. system. That's how he kind of ran his school. Yeah. So he was like the master and apprentice. And uh, can I he just would stop just tell you there what, because I got to say yeah. I think that that is so much better than going and taking art classes in a college. Oh you know, God! Was, yeah, oh God! A yeah. totally different. It's the way that things used to. I mean, when it used to be almost everything like a plumber you know you'd be an apprentice and then a journeyman you know mm -hmm. plumber and you know you would learn but all the trades were like that and that was that was school you know yeah but it was it was elbow deep into whatever you were doing right next to the master you know right there yes. and that's how you learned and you know this whole idea of of you know teaching from a podium you know theories and stuff i just think we've we've lost something in that educational oh, process absolutely but, yeah yeah go ahead please and uh yeah and that a good you know good point there is um you know and that's like apprentice type of um you know learning is great for those you know hands-on types of things um but even like you know look at doctors you know they still have hands-on you know mm -hmm. very apprentice oriented yep. setups and yeah um, counselors do too <laughs> yes counselors <laughs> yeah so i mean it's very valuable so if you can find someone uh to mentor you in whatever you want to do or teach you, uh, even if it's online, you know, it doesn't have to be in person. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's very valuable. It's the best thing you can do to shortcut uh, all the problems, really, um, because they've handled all the problems, all the questions, um, and they can just tell you how to do it, how to jump past someone trying to do it themselves. Yeah, uh, learning from you know a thousand different videos or whatever, you can just jump. Um, in your knowledge so much. Well, quicker. I'm really intrigued in what you alluded to, the secret, as far as what you're going to be doing next in your business, because it sounds a little bit more mentoring, you know, than it does just a, here's this static, you know, online class, you know, that's out yeah. there. I mean, with the multimedia means that we have nowadays, you know, online, that kind of helps, um, you know, it's a lot better than reading a book, you know, for example. But um, it's just like right now, my, I have, uh, <laughs> multiple streams of income and one of the things that I've done more recently that totally has nothing to do with fluid art is I started a little uh, Airbnb glamping business and oh, I have cool. a mentor yeah. for that yeah his name uh, Robert Abasalo who started the row built um, uh, raw built um, YouTube channel mm -hmm. names <laughs> that's cool and I'm in his second course where he you know you, you do this all online, but you know, he has lives and interaction and Q and A, and you just feel like you, you know him, you know, you kind of, yeah, it's very yeah. easy. I think at that point for me to think when I'm trying to solve a problem, you know, in my um, Airbnb business is go, instead of going, okay, what would, how could I research this? How, what could I find out in a book is how, what would Rob do about this? Mm -hmm. There's, there's something that's almost, um, almost ethereal, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just different, you know, where you go, Rob would probably do this, this, and this, you know, and yeah. I don't know that because of some kind of logic chain going on in my head. I know that because I know Rob, you know, and so it's that personal connection, which I really think you're you're going somewhere really cool with a mentorship program because you know you're the people that you mentor will probably do the same thing. They'll go, I don't like this corner. What would Brad do? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's it, it's so much help. It's so much more helpful, I think, than when you do have. Um, a more a deeper connection to your students or mm -hmm. people learning from you. Mm -hmm. And if they have a question, that question can like stop them dead in their tracks. And like until you kind of solve that question, you can't really move forward, no matter how simple it is, you know, um, that just like the simplest, smallest question, you're like, oh, I can't, I can't move forward until I can get that question answered. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have someone to go to to ask the question, and you can get a straight answer instead mm -hmm. of, you know, like 50 different answers, because then you're now you have 50 questions, you know. Um, so it, 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 you can you can progress and move forward quicker. That's great. You know, and getting more progress. Yeah, you're basically coaching people then. I know that uh, as a coaching, you know, be with a counselor for 20 years and then I kind of shifted over to a coaching model. Coaches get people unstuck. Yes, so exactly. People, yeah. So when people are stuck yeah. in whatever, you know, that they're doing. Uh, we have processes in which we help people to, you know, get help help them really to get themselves unstuck from whatever problem that they're facing or obstacle that's in their path um, or fear that might be hindering them. You know, mm -hmm. or to just kind of in that, like you described, an analysis to paralysis. <laughs> it's like yes, I'm, exactly. Uh, I don't know what yeah. I do? <laughs> yeah. I just got to do something. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And a lot of the time, it's just giving them permission to just you know try something out, test it out. And because I've, I've answered so many questions about uh, what about this color combination or this? And my answer is always usually, oh, I think it'll look great. Just try it. Try and, it. <laughs> and then, OK. And then they, you know, like they feel like, OK, I gave them the reassurance to go ahead and, and cool. test it out. So, yeah, I like your style. I, I don't know if you do like um, feedback surveys after your classes. Um, mm -hmm. I, I highly recommend them. And so I've, I always I live I exist off feedback. And so in my yeah, live right, classes, yeah. and then even in my online stuff, I'm always getting feedback. And one of the most common responses, uh, you just reminded me of was, uh, is that, you know, Casey just, you know, had, I, he did, we just had this kind of free flow of creativity. And <laughs> it just, you know, let's try it, you know, I, I'd ask him, will this, this, this work? And he'd say, let's find out. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Uh, yeah, there's really no wrong way to do things in the, the experience yeah, right. of yeah. just getting in there and whatever it's, it's fluid art or woodworking or business building or whatever it is that you're doing is just just get in there and um, take the risk and fail a lot and Absolutely. fail more quickly. All right, you know, because when we learn more quickly, and then we're able to be more successful more quickly. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that kind of goes right into my like one of my first mentors uh, was a guy named Ken Roberts, who was a uh -huh. um, a very 
a great marketer. Um, and I learned uh, all about a lot of marketing. He wasn't teaching me marketing, but uh, um, through all his courses, I learned a lot of marketing. Uh -huh. But uh, I found out about him uh, to learn how to trade um, commodities. Mm. And of all of all things, and um, <laughs> but uh, and, and that relates to this somehow. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> but he was a great marketer, and so yeah. um, you know he and part of and most of his business was selling how to learn to trade commodities. Wow. Um, but one of his big things was mindset, and uh, mm. l you know learning to um, you know think positively and um, learning to take chances and not you know overanalyze everything. Um, mm. And I'd never really learned anything about mindset before that. And I was like, this is kind of weird. Why is, you know, what does the mindset have to do with commodities? And, but then, you know, I, that always stuck with me. And then I've learned, well, it has everything to do with commodities, mm. especially trading, any kind of trading like that is all about mindset. And, wow. um, and cause mind, the mind will completely destroy you you know in, in trading if you let it um and uh but so that's how i kind of got into mindset things and um not that how i'm long, a scooper. how long ago was that for you, uh, did you... oh that was uh, 20 years ago or okay. so yeah um, yeah so that's been in there for a minute then yeah so, it's, so... I mean, kind of percolating in you it's poor, really kind of formed who you were you yeah know, and and it's very i mean i find it very important um uh, like negative thoughts and things like that, you know, you try to you crush those. And I find that, you know, mindset in art is incredibly pertinent and very mm. important. Um, one of my biggest problems growing up when I was young and into even with Jeff Watts um, and learning all this traditional drawing and painting is I was a perfectionist Ooh. and that was, it's the worst thing you can possibly do in art or anything else, you know, really. <laughs> and, you know, perfectionism is terrible. Uh -huh. And um, all it really is, is self-doubt and fear. And that's why you need it to be perfect and waiting for these conditions to be right, which they never will be because mm. um, nothing will ever be perfect. So you never get started. So, so you never get started. Mm. Yeah, you never take that first step. Mm. Um, and so learning to you know, not be perfect is, is a huge, it was huge for me and it's always a struggle. Um, I'm always kind of fighting that, but it's always in the front of my mind, you know, it's good enough, mm -hmm. just go with it. Um, <laughs> one of my other mentors, it was a business guy online named Jason Fladlin. He's this kind of great, crazy, goofy guy. He's a fantastic copywriter and marketer. But, you know, one of his big sayings is, is um, uh, good enough is good enough. So like get it. something down and then move forward with it. And like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, how could I possibly do that? <laughs> you know, coming from, you know, building things out of wood where things have to be very precise. And um, so, every, you know, perfection is, is like kind of baked into me, but um, slowly I've, I've learned to um, let that go. And fluid art is amazing for getting rid of perfectionism yes. because <laughs> it will never ever be perfect and you have no uh, control once it's yeah, out there <laughs> yes and that's it's wonderful and it's liberating and it's it is liberating um and and one of the biggest problems i find with my students is they have these expectations and they have these pictures that they want they form in their head like well it's not what i wanted you know it's not what i pictured um but it's still a beautiful painting, but they can't see, uh, they can't see it, you know? So, mm. you know, letting go of expectations, which is also, you know, perfectionism, mm -hmm. uh, it's gotta be perfect, um, is, is a really big part of, I think everything in, um, not just art or anything creative, especially, but just life in general. I mean, to be able to go about and just, you know, get stuff done as, as well as you can at the moment and then move forward. Yeah, that's brilliant. I love that. I think, you know, I was about to say, I think especially artists need to work on acceptance, but I do oh, think yeah. it's probably universal. Everyone does. But, and I know that you've had this experience too, but every artist I've talked to, they work on a piece and they just get, you know, get to where they just want to just throw it in the trash, you know, and they walk away <laughs> yeah. from it and a day or yeah. two later come back to it and go, oh, 
okay, well, that's pretty good, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, they yeah. were just in the, in the milieu there, and they were just like, oh, uh, you know, I want this little spot here to be different. And then when they come back, they go, it doesn't really matter that that spot is, you know, yeah, that way. It's, exactly. it's the whole piece is, you know, I like it, you know, I like it now. And, yeah. and I know we've all been surprised at sometimes when we sell a piece that one of the pieces that we did not like <laughs> yeah, sold first, you know, and sold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ones you love the most are the ones that people don't like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Usually. Yeah. yeah uh, that's and true vice too. versa. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, it's, it's, and the other thing is, um, you know, when you're working on a piece like that, any kind of artwork, um, you're in it from the very beginning, whereas the viewer is only seeing the final result. And right. so you, all these little things bother you so much, mm -hmm. but they never even notice them because they're only seeing the whole big picture. That's and uh, so, yeah, you, the details are um, uh -huh. insignificant, really, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I have a piece that's like right in front of my, my vision right now where I'm like, I remember that at the time I wish I would have stopped two steps before mm -hmm. you know it was it was it was so much better it's like oh why did that why didn't I but but nobody else knows it <laughs> yes exactly yeah <laughs> yeah yeah pretty cool any yeah, other mentors never, that were I'm yeah. sorry go ahead yeah they'll never see that yeah they'll never see yeah. that stage unless you film it and then they will see it <laughs> <laughs> then we can all lament together yeah, right. <laughs> oh there it yeah. went <laughs> yeah that's good. That's good. Alicia said, I've learned to walk away when I feel like throwing it away. <laughs> and then yeah. come back later. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Walk yeah. away when I feel like throwing it away. That's a good one. I want to use that. <laughs> Any other mentors been kind of instrumental in your life and what you learned from them? Oh, um, there's a lot. But um, like you were are one of them, like just kind of starting a paint pouring business or fluid art. And, oh, you know, good. I know I've used your, <laughs> your uh, handouts and processes and things and uh, I remember teaching your spin class um, for a few friends of mine that started a, uh, it was like a, a children's, um, I don't know, art, like art creativity center type of thing. And so oh, you know, cool. I taught, when they were launching that uh, business, I came and did like spin, you know, little spin classes and the kids were- Oh, in the salad the spinner? Taught in the salad spinner. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's a hoot. That's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, I you know, didn't so know it was, that. That's good. Yeah, it was all kids, and you know, it was just you know a fun thing to do. Um, but they created some amazing little paintings, and <laughs> they had a great time doing it. You know, another great. I mean, every, everybody loves it. I've taught. I've used the salad spinner with absolutely everybody because I'll go to rehabs and teach mm -hmm. adults and stuff. But um, uh, is now going to a um, uh, a senior living facility where, oh, um, yeah. and, and particularly even some folks with um, pretty adma advanced dementia. They don't. Mm -hmm. I, I go there like every other month, and they they don't remember me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, they'll remember the salad spinner and really? the tiles that we put in there. And they've got that. And I'll go to their room, and they'll show me. You know that they've got it hanging uh -huh. up. You know on the wall and stuff. And man, they oh, loved wow. that. And so yeah. it's yeah, that's really really cool to do. Yeah, it, it's. <laughs> amazing i think because it's almost like magic you know you put a little drop a couple drops of paint on and zip it around and then oh mm -hmm. my gosh look what we created yeah um yeah. it's such a unique like you know experience just it that is you can get yeah and from a cost perspective you can use a lot less paint because oh it's yeah typical force and so you can totally, get out your good yeah. stuff and do mm -hmm. some beautiful things with it and it, it barely costs you anything <laughs> yeah right yeah uh, to do that's excellent good good we also I know we have a mentor in common, Stu McLaren, uh, which taught me yes. how to do memberships, uh, mm -hmm. which you became a member you know, of that. And so you yep. went through Stu's class, so, or his 10-week uh, program. Uh, how is that affecting you now? Uh, well, yeah, Stu is amazing. And um, I've been following him for about two years now. Um, uh, I, was, I first discovered Stu um, last year in 2019, or end of 2019, just mm -hmm. beginning of 2020. And I just missed um, signing up for his for you know, tribe. tribe experience last yeah. year. Ah. And so I followed him for a whole year. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I just love Stu. I love everything about him. His whole, his energy is amazing. Mm -hmm. He's all about mindset and positivity and um, using what you've got and moving forward. And, um, but he's a very smart um, marketer, a business owner. Um, so I, and I've, I've, you know, I've been around the internet, uh, you know, marketing world for a long time, for about eight years or so. And there's so many 
um, you know, f- you know, phony type of people, false people, the gurus, you right, know, right. and um, and of course you can learn from them, but uh, but Stu, you can tell he's just a genuine guy. He loves it. his family. His family's always involved in everything mm-hmm. he does, um, and so I love his course. I love the way he puts everything together, and it's all about getting you results. Um, mm-hmm. And so he kind of teaches from example, mm-hmm. um, like the way he teaches his business is the way you should teach your business, you know, focusing on your customers, getting them results, um, putting everything you have into that, that in making that your main focus. Um, so I just love everything about Stu. Was, um, was your experience like mine is I think I went with 2,600 people were also in tribe with me, right? Mm-hmm. So a large number of people. And then we interacted in a community quite a bit. And Stu is the, if you don't know, he's the, Stu McLaren, he's the, he's basically the expert on how to build a membership, an online subscription membership program. And what was amazing to me, and you tell me if it was to you too, um, or maybe share some of the most surprising businesses that you would have never thought could be translated into a subscription membership, like dog groomers. Right. Yeah. Subscription membership programs, right? Uh, What would you, would you come to mind as far as like that were surprising to you? Um, oh yeah, there's, there's so many. Well, I, there's a dog influencer. Okay. Like, yeah. Like membership <laughs> is crazy. You know, I'm not really, a, into, I don't have a dog, you know, yeah. um, but, uh, but it's like, wow, that's like a pet influencer, you know, and like people join and pay monthly crazy. to be yeah. mentored with him to mm-hmm. be able to do that. And so, yeah. um, I always loved it. Uh, I'm in fact, I'm meeting with, um, uh, first time client, um, tomorrow because he has a unique skill set, a unique business, and he wants to turn it into a subscription membership program uh, to, and it'll be, you know, a very, very tight niche, you know, like yeah. there'll be uh, maybe a half dozen people in every state that would wow. be yeah. a candidate for that, right? Mm-hmm. You know, that, that would that would do that. Um, and, but, you know, he, He's done it for years. He does it very well. Most people have never heard that that is a business, you know, that that is something that is done. And so, but there's tons of people that would be interested in doing it once they find out. So totally, um, yeah. I think he's, you know, with that really, and one thing about being, you know, in the, the world wide web, I mean, there's 8 billion people on the planet, you know, what percentage of people do you need to be interested in your product? You know, point zero 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 you know, yeah, one, right. you know, something yeah. is yeah. all he needs to, you know, to, to have a very successful business teaching people what he knows. And so I share this with you viewer, you know, what do you know? You know, what, what is something that you're passionate about? What is something that's maybe even highly specific? Uh, out of all the forms of art that there is out there, right? You know, and Brad is very well trained, you know, in, in all of them. And somehow, some way, he found this crazy little, you know, niche of fluid art, and mm-hmm. you know, that's his focus. And you know, now he's helping people, you know, do that. And that's, you know, he's got, you know, sounds like building for a membership program, you know, there. Yeah. 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 Secret. <laughs> <laughs> we won't Catch tell out of anybody. The bag. All but right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. I really think yeah. I, I, I wish you the very best. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Casey. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to share with the, the listener? Oh, uh, you know, well, going back just for a second on Stu's um, program yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, what really motivated me to, to join Stu, but, you know, realize you, you can make your passion a business is all these other creative uh, people that Stu has trained and helped. And anything you can think of, um, there's probably someone, you know, with a successful membership business or mm. course business. You can do it many different ways. Um, there's one lady, and her name escapes me, but she has a thriving membership on teaching people how to paint door hangers, like little signs right. you hang on your doors. Uh. Um, and any, you know, crocheting, uh, knitting, any creative outlet you could think of, you can find, I'm sure, a very successful uh, business owner that's teaching that uh, to people that are also interested in that. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. Don't don't discount what you know or want to do or think. Ah, no one's going to be interested in my thing. Um, I guarantee you, there will be plenty of other people interested in whatever it is that you would like to pursue. Yeah, so. yeah. I'll, I'll try to find a list and post it of 
some of the more obscure membership programs that are out there. I mean, they'll, oh, they'll, yeah. just, they just, they'll crack you up. It's like, someone's building a membership <laughs> yeah. out of this. You know, that's amazing. And, and being uh, very successful, you know, with it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And the biggest, kind of the newest thing now over the last kind of year is, um, is like uh, membership boxes where you send right. you know, boxes physical of, of things, physical mm. products, and you send mm. those out to your members. And um, I mean, that's, you know, any kind of little physical product thing you could think of, you could probably find a, you know, a, a me monthly box membership for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like the, the, the shave uh, for men club. Yeah, like and, exactly. Uh, yeah, that was yeah, like that, the first big one, you know. Yeah, um, I think the guy sold that for like some crazy, like $5 million or something crazy. You know, oh, he's like, I think he sold it for a couple billion or something. Yeah, it was a crazy might, amount yeah. of money. Um, <laughs> But Dollar yeah, Shave so, Club for Men, I think, and, I, and yes. I think one of the big ones like Bic or something picked it up and mm -hmm. they just paid huge amounts of money. <laughs> right, lot. yeah. I'm yeah. going to send everybody a razor in the mail. Yeah, and right. And you're like, what? <laughs> but, uh, but the other thing is now, you know, since this whole pandemic thing, um, everyone is used to learning stuff online now. That's right. And so everyone is much more... Um, I'm not going back. Yeah, educated on <laughs> Zoom and... Uh, watching stuff online and watching videos and going on, you know, just like we're doing here, you know, with the interview thing, uh, streaming stuff. So um, the opportunity is better than ever before for for teaching what you know and are passionate about to other people. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm going to post um, again your your link um, for everyone to be able to get you the, the coupon and awesome, yeah. use that. Yeah. Um, yes. And it, you guys uh, jump on this course, you will not regret it. Um, and, uh, and then of course that'll keep you in the loop with Brad to see what he's offering mm -hmm. next when more of the secret is out. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to, um, swing on over to my Facebook group, you could always yeah, share that. that. Um, uh, it's called acrylic pouring club. And if you just type that into Facebook, I'm sure it'll pop right up. Um, okay. And if you, club. Um, so I'm in that group all the time, or if you just go to Brad Caston Acrylic Pouring is my Facebook page. So one of those two places, um, I'm there all the time or on YouTube. If you just type in my name, I'm sure you'll find many, many videos that pop up on YouTube. So, um, so I'm all over the place. I'm going to add the, so. uh, I got the, your, your acrylic, acrylic pouring club. So I'll paste that in there. Cool. Yeah, make it easier on folks that are watching this and replay and stuff. Very good. All right. Well, Brad, this has been awesome. I oh, always thanks, wanted Casey. to always wanted to get to know you a little bit better and uh, yeah. use this as an opportunity to. And you have a really fascinating background, and I really like where you've been and where you're going. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it, and thank you for all of your help and uh, all of your great advice throughout the year and a half I've known you. So <laughs> it's wonderful. Cool. Very good. All right, guys, we'll get in touch with Brad. Um, check out his uh, group and check out his uh, his educational products. And um, and then, you know, certainly get on his email list so that you can be one of the first to know w what he's going to be doing next. Thanks, Brad. Okay. Thanks, Casey. Appreciate okay. it. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.